Hey everybody, it's David R. Becker here on a Wednesday night. Yes, it's a Wednesday night. Um, we don't normally do these on Thursday, but since tomorrow is Thanksgiving, we're going to do it on Wednesday night. And um, I want to thank you guys for spending Wednesday night with me. <laughs> so hopefully um, everybody's going to be here. Um, thanks for always showing up, actually. Um, it's been great. And we, I've looked at how many we've done and um, I can't, can't, can't even figure out how many we have done, but we've done quite a few. Anyways, we're going to be doing, tonight we're going to be painting a scene that's very dark. I wanna, last week we also did a scene that was kind of dark, but we didn't get dark enough. Uh, so I'm all preparing you guys for the black paper, which we're going to be doing next week. And so we're going to be doing the Stonehenge Aqua Black Paper, Watercolor Paper, next week. And so I kind of want to get you I, the idea of what um, a dark painting kind of comprehended, <laughs> so that you can uh, see where the lights are and where the lights have to be. And uh, so we'll, have, we'll talk about that next week when we do the black paper. But tonight we're, we're working on white paper, but we're going to make it really, really dark. And so a lot of times when some of you guys are working on white paper and you have to make it really dark, most of, most of the time people don't use enough dark colors. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, and again, again, to prepare for ourselves. And so first off, um, we always test a beer. And so I've got a pumpkin beer, a O'Fallon pumpkin beer for, you know, it was for Halloween, but I wasn't here in Halloween. And so we're going to see how this is. Uh, you know, pumpkin Thanksgiving. It's kind of the same pumpkin pie. So we're going to see what this um, tastes like. And we always rate them from 1 to 11 paintbrushes. And we don't have, we haven't had many 11s. So this is actually looks pretty, pretty nice. Looks very orange like a pumpkin, right? <laughs> so let's see what it tastes like. It tastes like pumpkin. <laughs> it's a very little spice of pumpkin, a pumpkin spice. I'm going to have to give that a, um, if you like flavored beers, um, a pumpkin beer, it's actually pretty good. I'm going to say about a 10. Give it a 10. It's not 11. 11 has got to be really super good. But I'm going to give this a 10. It's pretty good. So cheers, everybody. Cheers to Happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. So let's go and um, let me show you. First off, for you newcomers here, I always show you... Um, my website so you know where to go to get everything and everything becker anything david r becker you find here so anything you want to see my newsletter my paint brushes everything you get here and so just come here and that's where you find that and then my supplies that i use are mostly holbein watercolors and um, stonehenge paper and my brushes which are also holbein but have my name on them the becker art brushes i only have six of them you can get the other um brushes other sizes they're called Holbein Golds, and so gold brushes. So they're, um, you can get that at some of the some of the shops. I think the VermontArtSupply.com carries the rest of the, the um, things. All right, so let's go to our value study right away. And actually, let's see who's here. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have Lynn and Pamela and Paula and Barbie. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Happy Thanksgiving to you guys tomorrow. And so here's what we're doing. And I know a couple. I had been told that um, I should start doing some um, men in my scene, and um, I, I just I'm not sure why I can't find scenes that have are men. But you can change this lady into a guy. So if you want to make this uh, guy drinking tea in front, or maybe drinking a beer in front of the fireplace, you can do that. You can change the drawing. Um, I just I can never find. And I know I, I said I was gonna. A couple of people I told them I'm gonna try to find some guys and do do some um, male figures in my paintings um but we'll do that but again if you want to change it just make this guy drink maybe a beer <laughs> or he can drink coffee too and i am going to be putting a little bit of um steam in this tea it looks like there's a tea bag because see you see the tea label little handle there and so what are you going to do is you're going to do this is like let's, let's pretend like we we're doing this on black paper what would you paint you paint just all all this dark right here you would leave alone and you just make a little bit of color a tint over this color to make it a color uh, here now we're gonna have to make this all really dark so basically the only thing that we have to worry about is the lights and this would be the white of the paper and also this though it is a little bit yellow and orange is in there because it's so warm you know it's supposed to look homey and with a bunch of warm colors and so we'll make this like our our golden colors and we'll put some warmth in our face and put some red we don't have to go with um, and uh, like a sepia, to, uh, the whole painting, we can put colors in there, but we do have to get dark. These darks here are all dark black, and I and we don't have to make them black, but I want you to make some of it black. 
And because I know a lot of people do not, they just do not use black and then they can never get this dark. And so next week when we use the black paper, you're going to be there already. And so you have black and then you got to get the lights. So you got to bring the lights out. All right. So let's go right to our tabletop and get going here. And so as you can see, I, I changed her hair a little bit. I gave her a little bit wavier hair. Um, I, I didn't like where her nose was placed. <laughs> um, and so her nose is a little low and her, she had a big forehead. So I took the, I took an arrangement and made it a little bit, I gave her a little bit shorter forehead and made her no, nose a little bit cuter, I'm hoping. Maybe I didn't. Um, actually, I'm looking at it now and, I, and, the, and, and the nostrils on the nose make them really, really light. You don't want to make it like a hole, like a dark hole. So we're going to keep that. And again, if you want to make it a guy, Give him a nice, nice hairstyle, and it's all gonna be dark back here. So this is gonna be like black. So don't worry about that. We'll just you're gonna make it really dark. And again, for all you newcomers or any, anybody that uh, remember to ask questions, when you choose the paper, what is your consideration in doing this with white rather than the black? Uh, that's a really good question because um, I would have done this on black normally because it has a lot of darks, and so. If you have something that has a lot of darks in it, might as well do a dark paper. Um, and since that's new, uh, a lot of people don't do that. But so a lot of people will not use the black paper because they just don't feel it's going to be a traditional watercolor. So I'm doing this one tonight on white only because I want to show you how to get it dark that dark. And you need to get it that dark. Otherwise, it, it doesn't glow. I mean, you want this painting to glow and you can't make it glow unless it has a beautiful darks around this light that's shining on this lady's face or a guy's face again if you want to make it that or even if you want to get a child make it a child drinking uh, coffee um that's all in the drawing so remember drawing is number one and so draw it the way you want it and still follow the same lights and darks that's all there good question though by the way and again ask questions do you have to make your drawing quite dark um, yeah, kind of, you kind of, kind of have to when you see it. Mine's a pretty dark line because when I go with my first wash, I kind of have to see. But when I put the darks in, um, then we're going to cover most of it up. So I don't have to worry about the lines. Unless there's area in the light here, you, you know, where you're not going to make it really dark, then just, um, just do that so that you can, um, don't see the dark lines. So right there, I can probably just roll my... Right, need a rubber eraser over it, and if you've never seen this trick where you go across it with a rolling, like a rolling pin, you get the, the light area, so then I'm getting rid of some of the line, but the dark area, I'm going to keep that, because that's going to be covered anyways. Hey guys, boy, thanks for all the questions. So, And I was wondering the opposite. Did you brighten the picture before doing the value study? Yes, I did. <laughs> wow, you guys are asking some great questions. <laughs> So I did lighten it so I could see what is in there when I'm doing a drawing. So I did that when I when I did the value study, I lightened the picture up so that I could see what's in there. Otherwise you just have dark and you wouldn't see what's in there. So let me go back to the value study here. So I lightened um, some of this up beforehand and then I then I posterize it to make sure so you see that the middle tones don't really matter that much. So what I'm doing here is I want you to realize that Yes, the drawing has to be right everywhere, but when you go to paint it, you just have to make sure that these big areas are dark. And even these middle tones are in the dark area, so really the only part they have to keep light is pretty much the light areas here. This is middle tone. It can go towards the light or the dark. It doesn't matter. Uh, make it a middle tone and it, it'll be fine no matter what. As long as all this light is lighter than the dark is dark. And, so, and there's nothing as dark in this light area as in the dark area. All right, so let's get going here talking too much today <laughs> but thank you for asking me questions it's great i love it when you ask questions all right so let's go here and so what do we do and this is not a landscape and we always work light to dark right and I, if any of you saw my newsletter i may even try to use my um continuous sprayer or mister it's not a sprayer it's a mister uh but it missed it put a little mist over that and I think it's going to be kind of neat for like light areas. And so if I want to just do this area, I don't have to do the whole background right now. If I just want to get a little bit of a, a wash in there, I'm going to take this and you pump it two times and, you, and it keeps on spraying for at least five seconds. So watch this. So uh, if you look up here too, you can see it against my, against, let me just put a piece of black paper down there that you can see the mist. So let, watch the mist. Uh, you'll see it in front of this 
but what I do, see how it just likes as a mist? It's like an aerosol almost, and so it's going to be kind of cool. And that was uh, that I had in my newsletter this week, and I'm finding it, I'm just experimenting with it, and so we'll see how this is. I'm going to start out with spraying my um, paper with it. It's going to spray. It's amazing how it just keeps it coming out, and... And so I'm not going to put a real lot on. I, just, I look from the side and it's not soaked like I normally do because when I put a, that lot of water on, what's happening is it runs all over. Now it's just going to concentrate it in with a little bit of light right there with a, a little dampness. And so I can go in there. Let's get this off of the light here. And so I'm going to go with my um, light colors now. And I want to get her face and her arms and stuff and make that and to get a color for, get a color for, the flesh tone, I'm going to make it kind of like a, um, a pinkish salmon-y color. So I'm using pink and a little bit of orange and kind of a salmon. And so now watch this because it, it's damp. I'm getting a soft edge and I can go into the hair because it, that's going to be dark. And so anywhere it's going to be dark. And so I just watch it. I should be doing the outside. And it's kind of neat. I, don't, I have to make sure my brush is not too wet, but it gives me a soft edge. And that what's really neat is it's giving me a soft edge, but not with a real, real super lot of water because I just sprayed it with a mist. And so see how I can still with using a little bit of paint. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. So what you can do is you can take a little bit of paint and it won't run. It'll still float, but it's not going to run so far that it's just running all over the place. You can use less paint because I don't have as much water down. And so it's that's what we're always doing is controlling the water, right? And so now... I'm controlling it to be just a slight amount of paint of water down there so I don't have to use as much pigment to control it because usually remember I always say control your pigment in the water with the amount of pigment you have so this is great I mean I just I am really super excited about that when I saw um, Carol Carter use this this um, machine here so now I'm gonna go in here I'm just gonna kind of do this the area of flesh tones and it just dampens, dampens the paper. So watch out. So if you use too much um, water in your brush, of course, it's going to run and give you watermarks. But um, it's kind of neat because it, you can use slight amounts of paint and it's not going to just blur all totally blur away. So now with our arm here. See, it gives me a soft edge too. That's what I really like. It gives me a soft edge. So I start out with the yellow on the edges because it's going to be really bright on the edge. And then I go from the yellow to the orange to the red. And in the face, I want to put some, you know, some pinks in her cheeks. And it's darker down here. And remember, it's going to dry 20% lighter anyway, so. So I'm just going to put that in there real quick. Hey, type of something. Hey, James. Hey, Jim. Hey, Paula. Hey, Lynn. Hey, hey Charlie. Ginny. <laughs> I'm glad you guys um, are here on a Wednesday. I'm sorry that it had to be a Wednesday. <laughs> I know you're probably all having to get ready for tomorrow. So thanks for stopping by. Stopping by. This is awesome. I was wondering how anybody's going to stop by because I mean, tomorrow's going to be a big day. And so some people are going to be traveling or just getting getting their lights up on their, on their Christmas tree. <laughs> Actually, that's what I did today. I did the lights on the house. All right, so there's my light on the arms. Now on the darks, I, on the, at, on the edge of the hands, I'm going to make a little bit of a dark here. And even in the face here, I'm going to put a little dark shadowing. And I'm using a brown, a, a mid is alone brown, which is kind of a, a yellowish brown. Or I should say a purple kind of brown. And so I know it looks really dark, but once it lightens up, um, it'll give it a nice, it'll, it'll be nice and it'll be a lot lighter than when I go with the really dark black and stuff in there. I'm just kind of getting the edge of the hands and the face so that I can get that little bit of the turning of the light. Because it is on that side, of the, if you look at the side of their hands, there is a little bit of dark in there. Also, um, I'm hoping this does not freeze like it has been the last two times. I did contact the company with this app and they gave me the solution that I'm hoping they, they said test it out and see if this works. Um, it was a problem with a thing that I didn't download, um, renewing. Because when you renew one thing, you got to renew everything. So um, always updating is just horrible sometimes. Because then if you're not updating one thing, you got to update something else too. You know, like, um, 
on my visual, I don't know what they call it, they had to, uh, I had to redo that too. So hopefully it will not crash on me tonight and so you'll see it streaming through and it won't lock up at a certain time and go away, <laughs> just just disappear on me the la like the last two times. And you can hear me, it sounds like, so that's good. <laughs> All right, so there's the lights of the, of the figure. And I'll put a little bit of the light on. You know, she can be wearing, she doesn't have to be wearing something like yellowish. She, you can you put any color there for the thing. But on the edge, I'm going to make it really light, make it a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white so that I can have the light coming from the fireplace right on her face. <laughs> And again, you can do whatever you'd like for all those people that came a little bit later. I said, I know I've been doing a lot of female um, figures and stuff. And I was told by somebody, hey, can you do a couple of men figures in some here? And I could if I could find, um, I will when I find something that's good. But um, you can change this guy, like I said to this, this afternoon or in the beginning, that um, just change it. Change it to a guy if you need to. That's just in the drawing. Just figure out the drawing. And if you need somebody to pose, have somebody in your family pose for it, you know, you can do that. You can take a picture of them and then transfer it onto there. You know, do whatever you can to make the drawing nice. All right, so in here, we're going to go with a little bit of yellow. And then make it go to a light white of the paper. And I am using a Stonehenge. Eye. Boy, it's so damp. It's so cool. That sprayer is just... Uh, I'm really impressed with that sprayer. It's just... I can't believe how... I didn't know about it. I kind of knew about it, but I never thought that it really worked like this. So, very cool. And if you do get anything on um, Amazon this week, go through my website first. You can actually um, look for something on my website um, from Amazon. There's a little, little um, what do you call it, a lookup bar. Um, uh, and you just type in what you're looking for on Amazon, and it'll take you there. And then it helps me with my... Um, with my getting up, bring out my newsletter for the cost of my newsletter and for also for these, these, um, paint alongs. So if you wouldn't mind, just if you're, if you're shopping, doesn't that's all you have to do is just type your, um, product that you want to look for, that you're looking for on Amazon, but do it from my website. And then, um, I get a little bit of it, not very much, but it's enough to help things, help things along here a little bit. And again, thank you to anybody who has been buying, um, some of my paintings, my paint alongs and the um, demos and the brushes i sell my brushes on my website thanks so much it keeps these it keeps all these um these paint alongs free i'm not going to charge for them and so here now we've got mo that's most of the light and uh, maybe a little bit darker in the corner here the neat thing is is that once you get this light then you're right to your darks remember how you know a lot of times we just wait for our darks areas and so this is there's not much light and so that's how come when we're doing the on black paper it's very simple to do the black paper because there's not much to do if you're doing a scene like this half of it's there and so all you're doing is all this little light that i just did that's all you got to put into the paper and now um and then these little tints of something that's it and it's very simple it's a i would normally have done this on um white or black paper but again i want to i want you to learn how to use enough paint all right, so let's go in here now and um, just a little bit more of the color that's from the, this is the top here. Anything that's light, I'm putting a little tint of color on there just so that when I put the darks over it, then it'll be, it'll be underneath and it'll shine through the dark. All right, so I think little edges of, and also we can always put the light back in later on with, um, with, like a gouache type of paint or just something that is going to be um, white, white with a color and it, so it's still going to be watercolor. All right, so I'm ready for darks, right? Because that's pretty much it. This is her leg and I noticed that there's no light on effect on it, so it's kind of weird. Maybe I should put a little light effect so you kind of can kind of tell the top. Maybe I just put a little light there. All right, so we're going, we still go light to dark, light to dark and so Let's go to our next, what should be the easiest way of doing this? Hmm. I think I'm gonna start with the background and work my way forward because it's gonna be dark. And so it's not like a landscape though. So if this is the darkest dark, what, what, there is a chair back here and there's a window back there and there's stuff you can see back there. 
I am not going to think about that and, and even try to make you see what that, those things are because that's just, to me, is just like a photograph. And I don't need to, and actually it looks kind of weird having the chair right here cut a little angle right here if you look at the, at the um, image. I want to get the feeling of light. That's the most important thing. So why would I worry about a chair in the background or what's ever in the background? It's about her, the light hitting her face and about this little bit of, um, um, I have a steam coming out of the cup. And so maybe that's what I do now. So go in the back and I'll do the steam. I'll just come around. Actually, you just got to figure out a path so that it, when you stop, it doesn't give you a hard edge. And um, you can just, so this is area is lighter. So I'm going to go this way around and do the background like this. And by this time it's already dry here. So I can get, oh no, it's not dry. So I can get a hard edge right there on her face. So it isn't dry. Wow, it's still damp. It is a little damp. I can look from the side. Looking from the side, and I can see that it's still a little damp from that mister. So let's go right into here then. So while that's drying, I'm just going to go right into the body here and maybe the fireplace because that's not as important. The, the front of her face has to be dry so I can get that really sharp edge in there and around her hand. So I'll wait for that. And so let's just do this and this, and then we'll go into there. Any questions? I did follow your link and brought a single mister. Should arrive on Friday. Nice. <laughs> don't worry about being late guys it's not a problem so i'm here <laughs> this, this, this video will be here forever <laughs> a painting per day should do the trick yes it does <laughs> painting a day is a good thing all right so let's go in here dark all right all right so now when you're picking up your dark air or dark, dark paint i'm gonna start with black i'm gonna start with black and i'm gonna color my black and so that uh black is just there's really no color in it right it's just black and so I take a big amount of black because I, some of these things I want to go and put a little bit of color and I want them dark. So what I'm doing is I can maybe make like a warm dark. I'm going to take a bright red and a black. And that kind of makes me a purple almost right there. So let's just go right. Let's see, where should I put this? Right here. And see, it's, it's, um, it's just damp. And so I'll get a hard edge, a harder edge that's somewhat... Uh, slightly soft but you can only get that with that mister spraying it so that it doesn't make it so wet that it has those little 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 crevice things it's kind of cool you're gonna like it uh, I'm just really impressed with it <laughs> I'm gonna come down here and just the top of that um, thing I'm thinking it should be a little bit lighter so I'm gonna make the top of the, the little ledge there on the fireplace I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter it's not on the photograph, but, and this may look really black to you probably, but it's still, I can, it's still, um, wet enough that you can actually put stuff in there too. Let's say you want to put a little bit warm color on top. And, but I do want to keep enough pigment so that it stays dark. I don't want it to be light. I don't want to be able to see through. You don't have to make, see through the white to make it transparent. It can still have. It just has a this matte feel to it when it dries that it just makes it look when it's um, fresh and you do it in one stroke it looks so dark and just so uh, it's kind of wet almost looking and it looks fresh and it doesn't look overworked because it's the way you put it down you put it down with one wash and you let it float and it's I mean people want it to be transparent but <laughs> I still want it to be black you can't have black you can be transparent but I want it to be black and dark and so worry about that uh, that you make it that dark that's more important than if it's transparent it will be transparent if you lay it down in one wash and you let it float that's I think the problem with um, with making your darks uh, with colors is that they tend to you know that you're gonna dry to a lighter and then you're starting out with not black here I'm starting out with black and then if I put a wash down it's dark and it'll, and though if you look closely and then you can see there's a little bit of color there's some color in there and color where I want it other parts where I don't want color I don't need to I just want it really dark make it dark here I'm put a little orange on it so you can see like a little bit of a earth, uh, middle tone so I'm gonna put that in there and then also I can make the shadows right away and this is all soft edge because I'm working wet in the wet right I can put a little mist on there and so this area right here will be a little bit lighter I'm gonna go with a little bit lighter color 
it's really cool because I didn't have to soak it and it's still wet. It's giving me a soft edge. And, um, but it looks kind of hard, right? It looks kind of hard right there. But that's a very fine, soft edge. It's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty amazing that um, I never knew that you could have something like, I could have used my Holbein Mister, I think, too, that way. But um, I never thought, I don't think it, could I pump it a lot? And then I just put too much water in there. But because this one's continuous and you can just put a little mist over it, you just let it float down onto the paper. And it really gives you a really cool, really cool layer of water. It's going to change a lot of things, I think, when, I work, when I'm working certain ways. And I still have to practice, and so do you, if you've never used it before. Practice with it. Don't try to do it on paintings yet. You know, practice with it on paper that's not a painting. Just so you can get the feel of what, what it is that happens. Now, of course, I'm using it here like I've never used it before, but that's me. And um, <laughs> I have to do these these demonstrations, these paint-alongs every Thursday. So um, I thought I'd just try it. And what the heck, if it doesn't work out, that'd be fine. Then you see what doesn't work out too, because I can teach you what not to do then, right? It's always about when you're teaching and you're learning, you always, when you make a mistake, that's when you learn. So don't ever be um, scared about making mistakes. That's what you want. And then we're going upwards like this. I'm gonna put this a little bit lighter here. I see how already I'm getting the feel of this is light, lit up, it's starting to light up. I will go in here later and get those rocks. There's like little rocks on the wall and I'll get that later. Um, with a little bit of a little bit of color in there, and I'm just getting the overall feel now. What's the overall feel of what's lighter and darker? And this is a little bit lighter here, and I can put a little bit of the orangey yellow in here because it's reflecting from this um, from the fireplace, right? So don't be afraid of also putting white into your colors if you want it to be, you know, a little bit pastel like. That's fine. As long as you're floating it, you're you're good. You don't worry about that. I'm gonna put it in here now. This part. I'm going to wait for this line because I can stop right there because it is a line. It's the end of the fireplace and then that'll be the rest. So there's one place I can stop and the background will be darker and right here. So I can stop there and I can go in right into her pants here. So I'm going to go around and I can actually put these lines in there too, but I think that's still a little damp. So I want to make sure when I want a super, super hard edge, I want to make sure there's no, no water, nothing. It's got to be bone dry when you're doing um, a super hard edge. One line, and then I like to do lines sideways. If I'm doing a thin line, I like to do it like this. It's like I'm writing. So I'm going like this. It's easier for me to do a straight line when I do it this way. It's like I'm writing a line, right? Going up and down like this is hard to keep it nice and straight. I'm put this little underneath there. You're getting a little reflection I see from the light. I'm still getting reflection right there. My light's back here, so it's not too bad. It's not blue, like on my screen it looks blue this area. It's not blue, it's more brown like. Now she probably has blue jeans on, I'm guessing, and probably doesn't, but I'm just gonna say she's gonna have blue jeans on here. And so I'm just gonna put that in there really nice and dark. I didn't wet it first, and this part I'm gonna not spray it. I'm gonna just show you that you can also do without spraying and then just add water as you're going along. And so I'm just gonna add water as I go along and then control the amount of paint you have by the amount how thick it is. And look at how dark I'm making this. I just want you to try. I know some of you will do a lot of colors in there, but just to worry about the values. I really want you to worry about how dark things are. If it doesn't look, if it looks like it's really dark, it's still, this is, this is gonna dry by 20% lighter, even though I've used a lot of pigment. It tends to dry really, really light because you have to use a lot of pigment on white because the white's trying to shine through. And so knowing that, then just add a lot of paint, knowing that it's gonna dry 20% darker. And it's gonna to try to be transparent when you're doing it like this because you did it in a, in a fashion where you did it you know, wet into wet and that means that you're usually getting a really nice edge on it. Now this is damp. Ooh, let me see what happens if I spray this. I'm gonna spray a little bit over this because this, this is kind of like a little watermark there so I'm gonna to spray over that. I'm almost putting too much water on there now. I don't want to just want to go in here with the dampness. I want to go in here and make this little reflection shadow. Look at that. Hmm, that worked. I'm like rewetting the area with just a dampness of, of paint or of water. 
it's so hard to do that with a brush because when you're going with a brush, you're moving paint when you're putting water on there. So the idea that you can use something and just float a mist of water on it is just to me going to be the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> it's just amazing that you can go back into an area then and not have to worry about that area um, picking up again. Like I just did that. I mean, I just put a little mist on there. Look at I could get that in there without having to re-wet with my brush. If I wet with my brush, I'm screwing everything up because I'm touching the pigment and I'm putting water in there and it's usually going to be too much. So super, super cool. All right, so what kind of color should we give her her top? I don't want to make this all brown and sepia tone. I don't want to do that. And so since we got a lot of orange, I put a little bit of, let me put a little bit more blue in this and her pants here. How do we keep the dark from looking chalky? Is just use a lot of, um, don't use the white. <laughs> don't use anything white, because that's gonna make it look chalky. Um, when we do the black paper, of course, you're gonna have to use white on everything because there is, it's black, and so you have to use white. So things, depending on how, how uh, much white you use, it'll depend on how, again, how much you're gonna use for the, make it look pastel, or is it gonna be a rich color? So the richer the color, the thicker it is. So I'm gonna make her blouse maybe orange, but kind of like everything else is orange ready too. Hmm. Maybe a blue. I'm going to give her a blue blouse. Or blue sweater, I mean, here. I'm going to give her a little blue because everything else is orange, so I might as well give her a blue blue sweater. And now i got to watch out for this corner here because I, I want to make the corner nice soft edged and then I want to make sure that I keep that light on the side of her. On the side of her, so... What I could do is I let me spray this area so that'll give me a soft edge. So let's try this again. I'm just gonna put a little dusting of water on there. So that dusting now will give me just enough that I can use a thick amount of paint. It'll give me a soft edge, but not so soft that it's gonna run all over the place. And I don't have to use as much paint. Look at this. I can just get the soft edge right here along the edge of her um, sweater here. I said I was going to make it blue, and what I'm doing, I'm making it orange. <laughs> oh, well. It'll be brown now because I'm using blue and orange together. But I'm floating it still. As, as, I, I'm, as I'm working here, I'm adding more water from my brush. So that's the way I add it is up here is by adding it there. I did a little bit with the sprayer, and that's enough to make it just a slight soft edge. And then... Um, It's so fun sharing all these things that we, um, you know, I saw, uh, I saw another artist use it, and um, the Carol Carter, I saw her use it at, at a um, demonstration that she was giving for my club, or not my club, it's the club I am the president of, the Lake Street Watercolor Guild. Last week she did a demonstration for us, and she used a sprayer to keep things wet. And after seeing that, I was just like, Whoa, okay, that is cool. So and it is cool, and I'm glad I can share it with you guys. And then it's just maybe another way of making things easier for you guys, to keep things wet. And and it, it's still floating your pigment, but it's just not as much floating of the pigment because it's just it's floating, but with a small amount of paint. I'm also going to give her an earring there. I'm going to show you how to give it like a little sparkle on her. I'm going to give her an earring there. So now we're just going to go dark here. Once we get this, I'm just not going to um, worry about how how dark I'm going to get. I'm just going to make it dark. And so I don't want you to see what's in there. I want you to focus on her face and the cup of tea. That's what I want. You can make it a little bit warmer right here. You can put a little blue in there if it's a blue sweatshirt. Sweater, I mean. Now her hair, uh, of course I'm gonna make her hair red because that's why I like, <laughs> like um, ginger hair, right? And it's gonna be, even if she was a blonde or whatever, it's gonna be very orange because she's sitting against the light, you know? She's sitting against a, a fire which is very yellow and very yellow and red and orange, so you're gonna have a lot of that no matter what color her hair is. So 
going to go in here. And see how I'm losing a lot of edges? Lost edges, it's the big thing now. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to teach you guys also how to lose your edges. Leave things alone that you don't know what they are. You know, if you don't know what it is, soften it and just let it be. Let it, let it just be a soft edge and you don't have to explain everything in a painting. You know, if it's just a lost edge, it just has to be the right value. Just go for the right value, you'll be fine. I'm going down here and now look at this big area. And why am I always doing with, with that round brush? I can go with this big brush too, to a bigger area. But when you're using a bigger brush, make sure you pick up enough paint and water so that it just kind of blends in here. I'm gonna go with it really dark over here because I don't want you to even see what's going on back here. So I'm just gonna make this dark black and not put any color in it. Just because I don't need, you don't need to see there. I just want it to be fresh, dark, fresh, dark area. And inside these darks that are a little bit lighter, I'm putting, and now it's kind of a sweater that's all kinds of colors. So I'm gonna keep it at that, that's okay. I have some blue, orange, yellows, everything in there. And so here, I wanna make sure that I have enough paint so that when it dries, it's not gonna get too light over here. But it's still wet in the wet, and so I've got it, I've got it really wet. And so when it dries, it will still look very transparent. It won't look thick because it's floating. And so that's one thing about dark colors when you're using them, make sure you float them. You can't use them thick like an, like an acrylic or a um, gouache. All right, so now we're gonna come around here and get her edge of her a little bit. You can see that background here is a little bit lighter than she is. And so that's okay that this is still wet because I want that to be a soft edge anyways. So let's make this a little bit, start out with like a little bit lighter color against her hair. Now it's dry back there, so I'm gonna get, that's wet, so it's just gonna poke in here and there. It's gonna get a little darker as you go over to the edge. And so I'm just adding black. I use peach black because peach black is a little bit of a warmer black. So a little warmer black in there. And that doesn't mean I can't use other colors. I'm gonna use this blue, Prussian blue over there. I'm gonna try to make this look like, I don't want him to have a hunchback here. So I'm gonna make it a little bit less over here. A little bit noticeable that that's her back and here the hair, the edge of the hair. Just soft. You know, if it's soft, then we, if it doesn't have a hard edge, you're not gonna look at it that much. So that's good. I don't want you to look over here. And so I'm gonna keep it soft. But having it soft also makes it look like it's blurry. And that's the neat thing in, in watercolor. If you can blur things. And it's basically doing it by on its own because you're just wet doing using wet in the wet. Which um, you learn from me is that it's very important to know how to do wet in the wet. Number one thing in my class when we start you, we get you total control of your paint. I'm using a smaller brush. I'm gonna go with even a smaller one for the side of her face. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can really get the nice side of her face and the glass and everything. And so let me just put my glasses on so I can see it's close up here. Any questions? What's the name of the mystery bottle? I'm late to the party. Um, it's, uh, I'm not sure if it has a brand name. Um, go to my web or go to my newsletter. And you can get my newsletter actually on my website too. If you go down to where you can sign up for the newsletter, there's a um, archive button there and then go look for the newsletter and then there's a, um, there's a link. Actually, there not there a link on this, on this YouTube. <laughs> if you go into the wording, um, there's a link in the information to go to these. So, um, right there in, on YouTube, go into my, um, information on the bottom where it's all written and you can get it there starting with the link in david's oh thanks thanks for telling <laughs> you can get three but there you also just buy one you just put in mist sprayer but again go through my website will you go through my website or this link that i have in here go through there because then i get a little bit of that um so that it'll keep these all nice and free <laughs> so let's go in here now and let me i'm gonna turn this oh it's nice and dry now Okay, so I'm gonna start out with the face and go away from this because this is kind of an important area here. So let's put even a smaller brush. So I'm gonna start out with a dark and let me go sideways here only because that way I can make a, again, I like going across something. I don't like going up and down when I wanna make something straight. So I'm gonna go with a really dark color with a lot of paint. I'm not re-wetting it first and wetting as I go along. So I wanna make sure I get this edge perfect because this edge has to look like, like her because I don't get the edge looking right, then that's, you know, that shows what her side of her face looks like. So I really want to make that 
really tight. And so I'm going to go in here, make it nice and hard edged. Get the side here, and then I can, you know, I can put pigment in there after I get this all done. I can get the color, but right now I'm just using solid black. Going in here, going down, getting the edges of these things. These are important. This is, this is what shows. This is what I want the center of interest. It's her face, and um, the lighting of this cup. And now I'm gonna um, go here, get some of the hair. Edge of the hair can be lighter. Now watch this. Now I'm gonna wet this area because I want the mist. Remember, I said I want to have, I want steam rising out of this, and so I'm gonna wet it. But I'm not. I'm gonna get that steam while I'm doing the the drawing here, and so while I'm doing the big wash. So the edge of her face, and now the, let's get some steam out of here, right? So what I'm gonna do is wet it as a lightly. And I'm not wetting with the thing right now because I want to control the wash myself. And I'm doing it slowly so I can go in here and get the steam. How much time do we have anyways? Oh, we're going pretty pretty slow here. I better hurry it up a little bit. And so we're gonna go up here. Finish an hour, right? So and I'm gonna wet this, keeping it nice and wet. Now I have it damp. And I've got the edges. Now let's go in with thick paints. And maybe not as um, thick right where the um, right where the steam comes because it should be pretty light where it starts. And then you can just have the steam come up. And you can probably even use white paint in there, you know, to make it look steamy. But first try to do it without white paint because that makes it, the darks look chalky a little bit. So try first to do it without the, without the paint, without the white. If you need some, you can actually do that later too. You can know, spray it and then later on put white in there too to get the steam. There's different ways. I tend to like to try to get first with the paper because really the paper is the lightest. And so if you can get to look like the light of the paper first. And get closer here. See, I can also take out with my brush, take out a little bit. Let's turn it back up this way so you guys can see. <laughs> uh, you've been all on your head, right? You're all sitting inside your head. <laughs> so get a little bit of steam in here. And that's not in the picture, so I'm putting it in because I decided I want to put that in there. So that's up to you. You don't have to put steam in there. I just thought it'd be kind of neat to have a hot, steamy cup of, you know, cocoa or whatever she's drinking tea. Actually, she's drinking tea, right? Because you've got the tea bag in there. So we're going down here and just putting thick amounts of paint. But inside these darks now, I'm going to put some more pigment and so let it float because again, most of you will not put enough pigment in here. And what happens is it dries and it doesn't look dark. I want it to be almost black so because next week we're going to be using black. And so it gets really, 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 really dark. And you got to realize that it's okay to have black on your watercolor. We've been programmed never to use black and not to have black in your thing. But if you look at some of the, the people nowadays who are painting these professionals, these um, Alvaro Castanets and stuff, they're just using solid black. And they're, they're making some great, great um, looking paintings. So don't be afraid of using black. As long as you're floating it, it can be nice and floaty and it can be nice and um, transparent. Even though you don't want to see the white of the paper transparent, you just want to make it transparent and look um, fresh and very, um, you put it down and left it. That's the best kind of um, wash in watercolor. They put it down and leave it. Now in here, I'm gonna go and soften some of these edges. And I can redo the small things like her hair and stuff and the little shadows on the face, but right now we're going for the big stuff. Big stuff always first, remember, big stuff first. Here's a little bit, I could put masking fluid down for like some of these things, you know, like this little, um, little tab here for the tea bag that you leave hanging there. I'm gonna go around it. This thing right here, I don't know what this is, some kind of handle thing here. I'm gonna go right through that right now and I'll put it back in and wipe out a little bit of it. Lost edges, remember, lost edges. They're so nice to have. See, I'm gonna go over this little thing here, get the look of the side here. Oh, I went right into my tea bag. Mm, oh well. That's a little bit not so straight. That's actually better. Down here. 
Saturday. See how dark things got? I left them alone. And right over here is nice and look how nice and solid that is. It's just a nice gradation of dark. You know, it's just um, do that wet into wet. Now I'm going to get the edge of this. Is like a little bit of an edge right here. And so it kind of comes down. And I'm going to pull this right into that area. I'm just going to pull this and make that a little dark. And because the nice thing is if you wet an area again, it can just take up some of the paint, but it also that is good for using again when it just settles down. It'll just settle down nicely and be dark again. Uh, so look at our, our little liquid here. Got a little bit too, our steam got a little bit too hard edged or it's not a little bit too, like, cause I went different layers of wetness. And so some parts are getting a little bit drier faster. And so I'm not getting that soft, soft looking edge. So I'm just gonna, it along a little bit all right so now it's detail time now we just go in there and oh we still got between their hand and our, and our arm here and then we're just gonna go detail and just like her hair i'm gonna give her an earring her fingers and maybe a couple of these things over here there's a couple of little things on the fireplace i feel like it's dark in my hand right away so i'll just put it in there so let's go through here It's a dark background. See now how this is going to be so, this, this picture will be so easy to do in black because I mean, you're just putting a little bit of this light in there. So this will make it a little bit um, more vibrant. This um, heavy using white paper than it does. It don't look as chalky as like a black sheet of paper. And so, so far you can see how dark I went. I went, I'm, I'm going pretty dark here. And um, there's still a lot of float. There's a lot of floating going on and there's still a lot of, um, you know, pigment that you can see, fresh pigment, transparent pigment. So I know a lot of times people, you know, when they're doing their darks, they then never get, they can make it so thick that it doesn't become transparent. And that's not what I'm talking about. You still can make your um, dark transparent by floating it. All right, so now let's take our cup and make our cup a little bit shadowed. Let's try this one, because it'll be a little bit darker on this side, right? And then a little bit lighter on this side. And my monitor is really bright, so everything looks like it's burnt, it's blown out in the light. So I can't look up on my monitor to see what I've got going here. And now on the arm itself, some of the darks on the hands and arm and stuff, I'm just going to put little little lines in here where it'll be a little bit darker on the edges. A little dark there. here doesn't take much you know you don't have to do very much on this part because it's already drawn there and you pretty much can tell what it is by the outline right and so very light touches when it comes to the face now and with the hair I'm gonna take my little rigger brush now and actually let's take another of this pumpkin beer cheers guys cheers happy Thanksgiving Boy, it's like it's like it's like pumpkin spice it's it's really good it's like pumpkin spice beer <laughs> you know they have the they have everything else pumpkin spice um that's like a pumpkin spice beer not bad if you like some pumpkin spice if you don't forget about it don't even try that it's horrible <laughs> for you guys so anyone with the link in here let's see looks like mono from youtube oh cool <laughs> you know with the hairstyle look at the hairstyle <laughs> so i'm gonna put a little bit more curls here now and um, I have a couple of little hairs hanging down on the side here. And I'm making a few of them here. They're not many. I mean, you know, it's not so much about having to make the hair look perfect. You know, it, it's more or less, you know, the person's got hair. That's about it. That's all you need. And then I did give her a, I drew in an earring, a little, a long round earring. I'm not sure why, I just thought it would be nice to have this round circle right here. And then we're gonna do our eye. And when you're doing the um, when you're doing the actual features, think of it as like this the face, the overall face is one thing, and then just look for the um, 
the um, features, the nose, mouth, and eyes, and eyebrow. That's about it. That's all I have to draw then. And so for the ladies out there who put on makeup, just pretend you're putting makeup on the person. And so, and so like right now I'm just putting the eyelashes in. So that would be what? Eyeliner? No. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> so then we're going to put this in here. So we're putting your eyelashes in. You guys put color in your eyes sometimes. Color up there. So what is that? Eyeshadow. So you can put a little eyeshadow up here. And then you can do the eyebrow. And the eyebrow is going to be coming up. And I, I know I'm not doing it like the picture because the picture I don't think is, she's so far from the side. I made the picture just slightly different just because I thought I want to make her her nose a little bit prettier than she had. <laughs> not that her nose is not bad. <laughs> it's just that I want to, you know, being in advertising, it's always like you have to make the person look like a model, right? That's what I always had to do when I was um, in advertising. You know, the, the person always had to look like a model. The ladies and the guys, you know, the chart, the chin lines and, you know, so advertising people. Storyboarding. And so here now we're going to put a little um, lipstick on her. Darker on top one. And then her bottom lip can be lighter red and leave a little highlight for the front. A little lipstick. And then give me, you can also make it natural warm like um you don't have to have her lips again she can just have um oh shoot put my dirty finger in there <laughs> you can just have it more pinkish you know like you know lips are a little bit pinker anyway so so i'm gonna show you closer up if you can see some of the colors and wow it just my monitor is so blown out right now i'm not sure i have to adjust it like because it's like everything's white <laughs> where there's color it's just a light tint of color there <laughs> Paula, my figure looks like <laughs> Boom Howler from King of the Hill. <laughs> hey, Sonia, no problem. Yeah, just drop it in. It's pretty simple, this um, painting, when it comes to lights and darks. And so I'm going to put a little bit more. Let's make this tea big. Blue, there's the main. This is sleepy time tea. About to go to sleep after this. <laughs> and then... Um, Inside the inside here, we're gonna put a little bit more detail in here too because this is like our secondary interest. So this is where the light's coming from. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of a little detail there, like it's something happening here. And then also maybe I can see a little bit of fire. Maybe I can see a little bit of the um, little flame or something here and there. Using my small brush and making orange, yellow, and and just making darker edges here. And then here and there could be maybe like the flame is just flaming up here a little bit. Put a little yellow there too. And then really on her face, there should be a little bit more shadow. And so here we go, boy. I'm not sure about this. <laughs> because the side of her face should be in there. Also her hand and stuff should be a little bit darker. And so let's just try it. What the heck? Maybe I can use my mister. Let's just try it. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I still got to put, let me put the rocks first, and then we're going to try the mister for the last time. By that time, we have to be done anyways. So here, we're going to go in here and get a little bit of these these rocks, the side of the, the, the little boulders in this fireplace. We're going to do the grout lines. So if you drew them in with pencil, you can probably still see them, but this part was where you probably should have done it a little bit darker so that you don't lose them if you do it with a really dark color, the side here. So I'm just putting in, and you are going to make it up as you go along here too, doing some of the grout lines. And the thing is, don't, you have to do them all. You don't have to do them all, just here and there. Just enough to show that these are little, nice little field racks inside the fireplace that they use to make this fireplace. And then soften the edges too. You can just, you don't have to make it such a hard edge line. You can just make it slight and it'll, it'll identify the line, the grout line of the rock or cement that's in there. So I'm going real quick in here. Got a little bit too much. And if it gets too dark, you don't want to make it really dark, just enough to show what's happening here. Let's go ahead. 
this way. Oh, I said I can make this thing in there too, right? Remember? So watch this. It's still wet right there. I'm just going to make that little handle thing right there. And so I'll put it in here and it'll start dark. I'm not even sure how important that thing is, but I'm just going to make a little light part right here. And then I'll make a little yellow there so it looks like it's being hit with orange and like a little orange right here. Again, not sure what that is, but hey, whatever it is, it's there now. Maybe this looks a little bit weird, so I'm going to put a little line right here. All right, what else? A little bit of the dark inside here. And I said I was going to do a little bit of the dark in the face again. So what I'm going to do is take a slightly dark bit, um, color of the, the flesh tone. Just another layer of flesh tone to show a little bit more of the shadow part of here. I was going to wet it, but the last wetting. So let's see. Here we go again, guys. I spray it. Put a little mist over it. And nothing happens except it gets misty. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. So we're going to leave the mist right there. And so now when I put a wash here and I get darker, I don't have to use as much paint. And it will give me a soft edge. And it will float. But I don't have to use as much paint. And so that's a great way of being able to control the edges, right? And let's see, our hand here is pretty much in the light, so I don't have to do that much there. Any questions before we get done? We're going to be done in about a, another minute or two. Let me just have her nose and make it a little bit darker. Oh, did I take away her cheek? Oh, shoot, I took away her cheek. Cheek back. I want to do this side of her nose, and then I want to do a little bit darker here. I'm going to add a little bit of white here and there because I want to um, show a little bit of. I don't know if the side of her hand should be a little bit darker. How much time I got? Ooh, a couple more minutes. So we're going to go here with a light. Light. Makes it light, and then darker. And darker on the side of her face. Any questions, anybody? For last, um, so I'm gonna take a little bit of white and put a little sparkle on her. Basically, the only sparkle I'm gonna put down is a is her earring. So my white is so dirty. Look at my white, my, how, white my, how dirty my white is. So I'm gonna have to just go over it. I'm so you seen probably the side of my ear <laughs> the whole time, right? <laughs> yeah, so here we go with white. Pure white there. And so what I'm going to do is put right here my little highlight on her earring. Maybe some of the hairs can be light over here. Is that too much? Go. Have a couple dark hairs and we will be done with two minutes to spare. Alright, let's take a look at another look at this. A little darker right here. Alright, I take the tape off. Another swig for the happy Thanksgiving. up and see what it looks like so hopefully you got a um, sheet of that paper because there's only one kind of watercolor paper out there right now um, the Stonehenge Aqua because it's sized I mean, you can try it on other black paper but it's not going to be sized they don't uh, it's not like a watercolor paper so um, I mean you can make it thicker that's fine um, if you if you can't find the Stonehenge Aqua but so next week we're gonna be working on black and it's probably gonna be a city scene unless I find something better I'm um, still kind of always looking for dark scenes that are going to be work, work great for this. I know he's got too pointy. I will go back in there. Just see, see now that I know he's got too pointy right here. So we're gonna. I don't make her a witch or anything like that. <laughs> and I'm gonna darken underneath there in a second, but it's still wet, and so I'll do that. 
All right, so there it is, guys. Um, give it a shot and post it on my on my Facebook group, Becker Art Group on Facebook, and let's see what you guys did. All right, so everybody have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving, and we will see you next Thursday. And we'll be doing, uh, make sure you have white. So for next Thursday, make sure you have a lot of white. All right, see you guys later. I was just looking for one more question, if any, many questions, but happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.